Welcome to New England Boating. I'm Parker Kelly. And I'm Tom Richardson. And today we're coming to you from beautiful, historic, boater-friendly Mystic, Connecticut. That's right. And you might know a little bit about Mystic. You might have heard about the aquarium or Mystic Pizza. But we're going to show you another side of Mystic. Mystic Seaport. We're going to go into Mystic. We're going to check out some dock and dine, do some kayaking. We're going to go gonna see the Charles Morgan, the famous whale ship. Lots of stuff. Yep. Lots of stuff to explore. And we're going to show you how easy it is and how convenient it is to get into Mystic along the Mystic River. That's right. By boat. New England Boating Mystic, let's, let's go. go. That lobster roll looks delicious. I'll give it to you. To another great destination. Are you shopping for me? Oh, there's a fish. Parker's goofing around. I'm going to miss. Make short, sharp sweeps with the rod. Oh, we want the fish that can eat that thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hang on, Parker. Stop, don't you? <laughs> On the pursuit with Dave Childs. He's with the Mystic Seaport. What do you do at the seaport, Dave? Well, I'm one of the captains. I captain Sabino, the antique steamboat, and I run the launches as well. Mm -hmm. This season, the steamboat's being restored, so I'm out in the sun running launches, telling and, stories. And coming aboard with us to show us and you how to navigate up the Mystic River. Now, we are at the mouth of the Mystic River at the Spindle. Right? right. So tell us about this spot right here. All right. This is where the channel from Stonington and the sea, the opening channel converge. Mm -hmm. And from here on, it's a speed limit of five miles an hour all the way through the bridges. Now the Basquiat Bridge opens 40 minutes after the hour. So if you are up here at the spindle at top of the hour, you'll make it through the bridge perfectly. Well, let's head on up, start heading up following the, uh, following the channel as it kind of winds around up past No Ink, right? Correct. And then uh, into, uh, into Mystic. So, here we go. So, as we make our way up the Mystic River and we're passing the marinas in No Ink, I notice that these are only uh, red buoys here. Right. The uh, channel is deep all the way up to No Ink to stay away from the pilots. Oh, so Abbott and Costello, is that intentional? That's so cute. <laughs> Absolutely, it's intentional. Abbott's has been here for decades, and it's one of the best lobster places. You can eat lobster right on the waterfront on picnic tables. On our right is Mason's Island, and it really is an island. There's a causeway to go to it, even though it's the side of the river. And there's mansions on it, and um, they have marinas on that side of the river as well. So this marina here, the uh, Mystic River Marina, right? Home, yeah. home to Kitchen Little. Yeah. <laughs> and you can also get fuel there, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're at buoy 30, so we are right in Marina Central here, it looks like, <laughs> right? We've got at least five, six marinas uh, surrounding us, right? Yes. So you got Mystic Shipyard over there. That's a big one, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And we pass by uh, No Ink Shipyard. Yeah. In front of us is Brewer Shipyard. Yeah. Over here is Mason's Island, mm -hmm. and uh, back there is uh, Mystic River Shipyard. Yeah, and there's a pump-out boat, so yes. they can take care of you there, too. They work the whole <laughs> river all the time. And then Mystic Seaport, where you can also keep your boat. Absolutely. <laughs> so we're approaching the railroad bridge. It, it, the railroad bridge is closed right now because um, they're obviously waiting a train. So what's the procedure here that you like to do? Well, I usually call them on 13 mm -hmm. and uh, ask them when they'll be opening. Let's try that. Okay. Mystic Rail, Mystic Rail, New England Boating. Roger, you have the RGM coming down. So we're between the bridges right now, and uh, there are some massive boats here at this marina where the R36 restaurant is located. This is Seaport Marine, this yeah. marina from here to the bridge. So, I see the fire boat that's docked here. Yeah, you're not, you're not allowed to dock along the facing part of that dock, but the, the dinghy dock behind it? Yeah, the floating dock behind it is fair game. We're on the town side of Mystic Seaport, and there's a public boat ramp right there that's great for kayaks and small boats. Uh, there's trailer parking in a nearby church parking lot. You can walk back. How far above north of the shipyard can you can you go on the Mystic River? Further you go, the shallower it gets. 
but you can go pretty far up river in a, in a, in a kayak. Obviously. Absolutely, you can go another two miles up there. Now when you stay at Mystic Seaport, is admission included? Yes, absolutely, it's part of the dock price yeah. and everyone on board. What other kind of facilities do you have here? Well, besides the museum itself, we have showers, laundry facilities, Wi-Fi, um, just like most every marina. They have a van to take you to the grocery store and we accommodate any way we can. What a glorious entrance. Yes, <laughs> it's a beautiful museum. place. It sure is. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Parker. It's great to meet you and welcome here. Thank you. Well, thanks, thanks again, Dave. That Thank was very show. informative and uh, entertaining as well. <laughs> Good. I'm so excited to be here at Mystic Seaport. I am. I've never been here. <laughs> and it's so easy to get here. It is. And it's such a beautiful primo location. We're here with Dan McFadden, and uh, he's from Mystic Seaport. And he's going to give us a tour because he knows everything. Well, I know almost everything about this place. <laughs> and there's a lot to know, and that's the key thing. Uh, we're a museum, but we're a lot more than that. Uh, we're here for families. We're trying to make a connection and teach people about America's maritime heritage, and we do it in many, many different ways. But now there are people performing live when we walked in. Yeah, they're doing Moby Dick in minutes right behind you. That is so cool. <laughs> and I see lots of kids and lots of people. So it's more than a museum. Tell us a little bit. What does that mean? Well, as I said, we're trying to make a connection with America's maritime heritage. Um, so we have the Charles W. Morgan, or 18... 41 whale ship, that's an artifact. You can go on board and touch it and see it. We're going to do the that same, later. We're going to do yes. that later. Um, you can walk around the village and you can see craftspeople and tradespeople doing what they did to keep the Charles W. Morgan afloat and at sea. And we have formal exhibits where you can go in and see tremendous art. You can see artifacts from the past. And you can see movies. You can do all sorts of different things. So we try to touch people in very different ways. Let's go on this tour and uh, check out the seaport. Yes, okay. please show Thanks. us Let's around. Do it. Thanks. This is our newest exhibit, Voyaging in the Wake of the Whalers, which is a new take on the story of whaling in America. So we start with Native Americans, and we go all the way to the present day. We're, of course, not hunting whales. We're watching whales and conserving them. So we've really updated the story. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous on the scrim, and listen to the sounds. Can you hear it? So what's this here, Dan? This is a set of teeth from a sperm whale. Uh -huh. Teeth? And if you notice, know teeth. These are real whale the teeth. They don't look very sharp. No, they're not. In fact, right now, if you think, that's a whole jaw right yeah. there. But notice how rough they are. Mm -hmm. This is what they were like naturally. Love the globe. <laughs> Globe's a big favorite. So this is actually a, we're projecting three different movies up inside this globe. And yeah, you're right. This is just cool. It's, it's fun to hear this, see the stories and see it in such a different way. Each one of these figureheads has a story to tell. And I think that's why people really like it. This is one of people always comment about this exhibit. Sort of put yourself in a position to be curious about the story. Like, where was this figure out from? What ship was it on? Where did it go? And these are all original? These are all original. Re the real deal. Yeah, these are all the real deal. And okay. if they're this big, I mean, how, how big is the ship? Well, that's the key thing. <laughs> yeah. This was just a little part on the bow of a ship that may have been 300 feet long. One of my favorites is the one right over your shoulder here, which is Donald McKay. So he was a famous shipbuilder in Boston, and this is on a ship that was named after him in 1855. Went around the world, was wrecked off the Cape Verde Islands, and actually was left outdoors for many years until she came here. So it's been restored. It's just cool. You think of where this figurehead has been, it's pretty amazing. More places than me, yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> So here we are in our 19th century seafaring village. We actually recreated this here. In the 1950s, we brought historic buildings that were at risk of being torn down or destroyed and brought them here. So we could recreate a village set in the 1860s, um, and it has everything you would need to support a ship like the Charles W. Morgan at sea. Mm -hmm. So we've got a shipsmith, we've got a cooper, we've got a printer, a ship's carver, we've got a sailmaker, we've got a, a rope walk, we've got everything you needed to support life at sea. And you can come and check it out. Dan, thanks so much. Oh, this, my pleasure. This is just the beginning. There's a lot more to see. I'm going to check out more. Tom's going to uh, go check out the Charles Morgan. That's right. This has been great. Thanks so yeah. much, Dan. Anytime. Thank you. All right. See you, Tom. Bye-bye. See you, Dan. Have fun. Last summer, 2014, we took her to sea again for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, the famous 38th voyage. The famous 38th <laughs> voyage. We are standing aboard a very famous ship. It's the Charles W. Morgan. It is the last wooden 
whaling ship in the world, and uh, you're lucky enough to be able to, to work on this boat, on the ship, and uh, show people about it, right? That, that's, that's correct. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, she was built in 1841 in New Bedford, Massachusetts, and she whaled for 80 years until 1921. She made 37 voyages, and uh, then she hadn't been to sea again since the early 1920s, but last summer, 2014, we took her to sea again for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, the famous 38th voyage. The famous 38th voyage, mm -hmm. that's correct. And you were on that. Right? Yes, I was one of the crew members. I was I was lucky enough to get to sail on 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 this ship. That's amazing. What was it? I mean, was it uh, what was it like? Well, it, it was it was incredible. There were some things that I had never realized, like how hard we had to work. We we never stopped working, and that was a kind of a revelation. We hadn't realized that there would be that much action. We also realized how fast she was. We'd always thought she would only go about three to five miles per hour, but nobody told the Morgan that. In her very first day, she had seven and a half really, knots. It, this a, a and lot. Been to a very fast. Wow, yeah. that's great. So that yeah, so that must have been a thrill for everybody on board, and uh, you got to know the ship real intimately I bet very intimately <laughs> why don't you uh, take us take me around and show us some of the uh, some of the neat features of this ship if you can look up to the top of the mast in those hoops there would be two men standing looking out constantly for whales mm -hmm. and if they spotted one they cry out whale ho there she blows there she breaches mm -hmm. one of those cries the crew would assemble and they would lower the whale boats and, mm -hmm. and then go they'd row them. and then they'd row right after it right? they would row after the whale and it's a pretty astounding if you think about the fact that they could row fast enough to get up to a whale yeah. and then throw the harpoon and then go for the famous Nantucket sleigh right, ride right. so what room are we standing in here we're down below what room is this? This is the officer's quarters, and this is where they ate. And you can see that they have light and air and uh, privacy in their cabins, which is exactly what the ordinary sailors don't have. They have um, no light, no air, and no privacy. And, and they're crammed in there. And they're crammed in there. <laughs> What's like the maximum amount of time the, the Morgan would spend at sea? So the average voyage was between two and five years. Oh my gosh. So, you know, two to five years at sea. With the that, same bunch that, of guys. With the same bunch of guys. <laughs> you would know everything. You would know every joke they had, every little, story. If they talked in their sleep, you know, um, all the... too witnesses. much information, yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> So we've descended to the very hold of the ship. Now, this is where all the whale oil would be stored, correct? That's correct. And it would all be stored in casks, mm -hmm. and they could hold about 75,000 gallons. It took roughly 60 whales to fill the ship. And as we said before, two to five years. So if, if you think about that, that's averaging only about 12 whales per year, which means oh. it was a really long time to get home. Yeah, absolutely. And it got harder and harder to find those whales naturally Over as they got time, fished yeah. out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, don't go away because right now Parker is going to check out uh, the for, uh, Latitude 41 and do some cooking with Andy Fine. And uh, what she's cooking, I don't know, but I hear it's pretty special. So don't miss it. Just a short walk from Mystic Seaport, and I am here, Latitude 41. This is Val O'Brien. She is the uh, operations manager That's correct. here at this uh, amazing facility with incredible location. Right. Tell us a little bit about this, please. Well, Latitude 41 has uh, is owned and operated by Coastal Gourmet Group, which has been in business for 28 years. We do quite a bit. We do um, mainstream dining. We have our tavern inside. We have two beautiful dining rooms, and we also cater to uh, a, a large amount of different events, especially weddings. Okay, so Tom's already in the tavern. Not uh, Great. surprised. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to go in and cook with the chef, uh, Andrew Fine. Andrew Fine is our executive chef. Yeah, you can find wait. some really great stuff in our kitchen. And can't wait to see the facility, too. Hello Excellent. Very Thank nice. you. Thanks. All right, Shipyard Burger. Shipyard Burger. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that doesn't sound like your typical burger. No, not your typical burger. It's, uh, it's going to be the size of Tom's head. <laughs> All right. No, more than that. More than that. Come on, season our burger. Yeah. More than that. Only season one side. Okay. Don't what? season both because it's going to be too salty. Okay. All right, we don't need it to be salty. We just right. want it to taste good. All right. All right, now, shipyard burger. The reason why we call it shipyard burger yes. is because we use shipyard ale in it. All right, shipyard yeah. burger is eight ounce burger, barbecue pulled pork that we make with shipyard ale, braised pork belly, which we cook for a three-day process, cheddar cheese, lettuce, tomato, all in one burger. Are you kidding? Yes. That's yeah. like go big or go home. What is this that? This is the star of the show. 
This is braised pork belly. Now, this is not your normal pork belly. Now, as you know, pork belly is a big slab of bacon, uncut. Okay. Right? So what yeah. we do is we do what they call confit. Confit is the act of cooking something very slowly for a long period of time. Yes. Yeah. Okay? Don't rush. Don't, can't rush perfection <laughs> on this, right? So we cook it really slow. Then we cool it down overnight. Then I take it, I cut it into blocks, and we crispy fry it for a long period of time, right? That's where it gets that like nice crispy outside yeah, edge. That. Then we cool it again overnight. Yeah. Then we put it on the grill and we grill it. And then it goes on top of the barbecue pulled pork. So this has this whole separate thing that it's goes. It's a three day process three -day before process it even gets to the Just burger. for one of the many ingredients on yeah. that burger. Yeah. That is crazy yeah. cool. Beast. Just like that. So no little tiny toothpicks. No, we don't, use, we don't go with toothpicks here, Parker. <laughs> I'm bringing this out to go bring it top. Now I know I'm the master. See you, Andrew Klein, right. executive chef. That guy rocks. Look at that. <laughs> Tom. Yes, Parker. How's your beer? It's, it's good. It's good. It's very refreshing. It's a great place. Super. What, I bought you what's a little, that? Uh, a little <laughs> snack to go with it. Check what that you, out. What have you done? Dude, that's a beast. <laughs> I want to sit here and have you have a bite. You made that? I did. <laughs> What is it? <laughs> it's a shipyard burger. It is meat and meat and meat yeah, and I meat see. and little it looks cheese like ham and, a <laughs> and a burger. Oh, look at that. Urban seared scallops. Okay. Cauliflower puree. That is Mostly lovely. corn relish. Pan seared scallops. On top we have a bourbon crackling bacon jam and we're gonna light it right on fire. Oh, beautiful. That's how we do it. And how, how long do you just let that just... It's just going to go out. It just caramelizes? Mm -hmm. It's just going to cook that bacon that right under awesome. the scallop. So it's just a 10 minute walk from Mystic Seaport and you're here. This is the drawbridge behind me. Now technically, Groton is this way and Stonington is this way, but it's Mystic. So, so far, what do you think of Mystic? It's wonderful. Beautiful house. It's very nice. Yeah. And so how would you describe the downtown? Um, quaint. Quaint. Do you have another word for it? No. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so I guess I picked the right place. Joel, Melissa, Archer, and Ainsley are locals, and they come here to the Mystic Drawbridge ice cream. What'd you guys have? Sticky fractured finger. Sticky fractured finger. What'd you have? Cookie dough with sprinkles with on sprinkles. it. Cookie dough with sprinkles with on it. Mystic mud. Mystic mud. Very nice. So after a long afternoon of shopping, I stopped at Mystic Drawbridge ice cream. Worth the trip, absolutely. More of New England Boating coming up. Stay with us. So we're at the Mystic River Marina, and you can dock here uh, along the facing docks there where we just docked, <laughs> and uh, come ashore and have breakfast. have breakfast at Kitchen Little. Jimmy Woolley, he is the <laughs> co-owner of Kitchen Little right here at the Mystic River Marina, and you guys uh, do breakfast really well. We do breakfast very well. Yeah, about 30 years we've been going there. Mm -hmm. So it's got, it's an institution among Mystic boaters and Mystic uh, people who live in Mystic. Yes, it's a destination. You know uh -huh. I mean, they come to Mystic, they uh, they may come for the seaport and end up here. They may come here. That's and end what up we at did. The That's what we did. Yeah. So it's just a, it's a wonderful. And you can and if you're a boater, you can dock right here at the Mystic River dock, Marina yeah. on the facing docks there. Just tie up and tie uh, up anyway, and, and just yeah. walk in and. Have get, a lot get of food. Fed. Eggs yeah, to yeah. see. Eggs to see. I'm an eggs to see. <laughs> yeah. Well, we well, are. well, you could be an eggs to see too if you come down <laughs> and uh, have a delicious meal at Kitchen Little right here at the Mystic Ooh. River Marina. Yeah, it's good. So while we've been filming this episode, we've had the pleasure of staying at the Inn at Mystic. This is Tim Brown. He's one of the owners here. This is just a little part of paradise. Thank you. Well, I want to welcome you. Thank you. Um, you know, it's a great property. We've been here a couple of years, and you know, it's just the only real property that has a great water view. A spectacular view. So how many acres do you have here? A little over 14 acres. Mm -hmm. um, we've done a lot of landscaping to make it, you know, really natural looking. Now, how many rooms do you have here? 60 rooms altogether. There's uh, the inn that has about 50, and then we have another five that are in the mansion. They're kind of, you know, special rooms. They're all decorated differently. So tell us what we're looking at, what we're actually really Right now at. we're looking at Fisher Island Sound, um, mm -hmm. the only property in Mystic that has a full view of Fisher Island Sound. And the, you know, from the restaurant deck to the mansion deck, 
and even from most of the rooms, you get a, a pretty good view of the sound. I bet that this is a, a photo op for many weddings right here. Yes, um, and occasionally people wind up in the fountain, but <laughs> they start out with a great photo opportunity. And then we have a small area down below where we do the ceremonies. This is the old Haley Mansion. Now, built do you, do you in know much? Okay. Um, Catherine Haley, after her husband, her husband owned Fulton Street Fish Market. Okay. And after he passed away, she built the mansion that he didn't want to build. Oh, he didn't want to build it? No, so um, Catherine and her daughter actually lived here. Just spectacular. Thank you so much for sharing this you're with welcome. us. You're welcome. If you're ever in Mystic, which you should visit Mystic, you want to stay here at the Inn at Mystic. Thanks so much, Tim. Thanks for joining us. Beautiful property. Just Thank you. Just gorgeous. So I'm here with Eric Kronholm, and he is the owner of River Dog Kayaks. And of course, by this time in the show, we know a lot about this area, and you suit the vibe very well. Thank you. Say a little something about yourself. Hi. I uh, have kayak business for the summer. My son works here, and a couple of high school kids and myself. What we do at River Dog Kayak, dogs are welcome, first of all, always. Um, a bottle of cold water, a paddle, a life vest. We slide you down. You, get, you don't get your feet wet. We send you out, and you can go wherever you want. We're not here to control your day, we just want you to enjoy the river. In the last, uh, in the last 10 years, restaurants have been popping up. Oh, there's a, one here that's been here forever called the Daniel Packer Inn. Great restaurant, but over the ten, last 10 years. Oh, the Daniel Packer Inn, there's some stories about that one. Daniel Packer Inn's got a saloon in the basement, and it's... 17 something, you know, very old, and there's Fort Rachel in the background, probably the highest hill in Mystic. And the British used to come up this way and they'd come out of the saloon, get up Fort Rachel Hill, shoot down at them, they'd turn around and they'd go back to the saloon. That's yeah. the story I've heard. <laughs> I wasn't there. The newest, I think, is this one, R36 on the left. Red 36 is, if there was a, a red nun buoy here, it would be number 36. Yeah. There isn't, but that's the number. And it's probably three quarters outside seating. What's this place here? It's uh, Mystic Marina, and they do specialties with wooden boats. Always pretty boats over here. It's been an interesting little trip. Busy town, beautiful town. Beautiful town. You can do an hour rental and just go up to the seaport and do multiple hours and go all the way down to Noang, Connecticut. It's your choice. We're not gonna go, tell you what to do. Not gonna tell you what to do, Go <laughs> where to go. Just uh, come and rent a kayak and enjoy the river. Yeah, make sure That's you do. That's our motto. Yep, make sure you do come down and see him. All right, paddle on. Yeah. Paddle on, Good sir. Good seeing you guys. Mystic Seaport. Wow. Mystic Connecticut. I'll tell you, there's uh, <laughs> activity going on all around here. us. <laughs> and, and what a great place to, to bring your boat. We got to stay here and see the shipyard, uh, sorry, the seaport from a, a completely new perspective than most visitors. Yes. And, and, and anyone can do it. And anyone can do yeah. it. And it. And it's easy. It's easy to get here. And it they is. have all the uh, facilities and amenities that... Yeah, like any, a regular... It's, <laughs> it's a marina. <laughs> with, with a museum. That's right, with a museum attached. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely come visit Mystic. Yes. Sadly, we need to go. Yes. So please follow us on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. All that stuff. All that social media stuff. And, and if you want to learn more about other New England boating destinations and news and fishing information, check out NewEnglandBoating.com. Until next week, I'm Parker Kelly. And I'm Tom Richardson. See ya. See ya.